Okay, so let's see how you did. Get my tools. Okay, so hopefully you said yes. Okay, and here's the reasoning. Okay, we have WVZ congruent to YZV. Okay, those angles are congruent. And VZ is congruent to itself, right? That's the shared part of the two triangles. We also know that WZV is congruent to angle YVZ. So you can see there's two separate markings here. It almost looks like a continuation. And even if it was, again, if we have congruent angles and we take away a congruent part, that would leave us with these angles that are congruent. So we then know that uh, the triangles are congruent by angle side angle. Okay, and if you're having trouble seeing that, separate the two triangles. Okay, if you look at just this triangle on the right, we've got this angle here at Z, we've got this angle, and then the shared side, which is VZ. So it's the side between the two angles. Once we have the congruent triangles, we can then say that the parts are congruent. Okay, that's the CPCTC part. Uh, so the segments that correspond VW and ZV, <coughs> excuse me, and ZV are also congruent. And you could have been asked to prove that any other parts were congruent. Okay, they just happened to choose those two segments. Okay, so let's move along here. So what are the corresponding sides and angles in these two triangles? Okay, W, X, V. Okay, and X, W, Y. So again, if you want to, you can separate the two triangles. Sometimes that helps. Right, so here's one triangle, or even just maybe outlining one of them in color or two different colors, that can sometimes help. And as you're doing that, you can actually see the shared part because right, you're tracing over it twice. Okay, so they share this side here. We have XY congruent to YV. We also have WY congruent to VX because again, if WZ is congruent to XZ and VZ is congruent to YZ and we add those parts together, we get new congruent parts. So what we really have here is side, side, side. So if we separate the two triangles, I can say that we'll start with the sides, I guess. The side WV is congruent to XY. Uh, let's see, I also have VX congruent to YW. And then finally, we have that shared side, which is WX congruent to XW. And again, if you're not seeing how these letters interchange, then you definitely want to take those two triangles and separate them. Okay. Now for the angles, we can start with angle V is congruent to angle Y. When there's no questioning, what angle am I talking about? You can use the single letter. That's okay. But here, if I say angle W, you don't really know which angle I'm talking about. Okay, so we need to use three letters at W and X. So I'm going to say, let's see, from the blue triangle, 
I'm going to call this VWX. So angle VWX is congruent to, and I want to follow the order, V corresponds to Y, and then it will be XW. And then lastly, I need these angles. Okay, so in the blue triangle, I'm going to call it VXW. And that is congruent to, in the red triangle, this angle here, which I'm going to call YWX. Okay. For number six, we're naming an angle that's congruent to CDA. So here, did I separate these? I did. Okay. So let me pull these apart since I have these set up. If I can grab the right thing. There we go. And you'll see if this is better for you or not, seeing them pulled apart. Often it is, and it depends on how good you are at visualizing it, but sometimes I like to do the separate drawings. Okay, so this is A, D, and C. Okay, so for CDA, okay, we're talking about this angle here. Okay, so when I look at these triangles, I've got CD congruent to AB. And then I also have this triangle here, which is angle D congruent to angle A in this triangle. So now, oops, make my eraser a little smaller. Let me take this out because we don't actually have this yet. So I don't want to mark that yet. Now we're also given that angle B is congruent to angle C. Oh, I took this one away. I was just marking angle D, and I shouldn't have done that yet, but I don't want to confuse the drawing. So here's what we have. We have angle A congruent to angle D. We have angle B in this triangle congruent to angle C in this triangle. Again, I should be using three letters for all of those if you're referring to this diagram, but in this diagram it's clear. And we have a side AB congruent to side CD. So by angle, angle side, we can say that the two triangles are congruent. And given that, I can then say that angle D or CDA is congruent to this angle here. So angle CDA is congruent to angle BAD. Bad. Okay, now name a side that's congruent to DB. So now again, we know the triangles are congruent, right, from angle angle side. And I can now say that B or DB is congruent from course from CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. I can say that DB is congruent to AC. Okay, let's move on to some proofs. So here you can see this is the first time where you're asked to prove that parts are congruent. In this case, the angles. Okay, you're used to seeing prove that the two triangles are congruent. And again, that will be the way that we're going to go through the proof. We need to prove the triangles are congruent prior to stating that these angles are congruent. So this proof will have one added step, and CPCTC will be our reason for this line. So let's start off with the given. We have AB, segment AB congruent to segment AD. So I'm going to mark that. We also have 
segment BC congruent to segment DC. And I'm going to mark that with a double dash. Now this could be on two separate lines or it can be together on one line. Okay, that's up to you. As long as you're giving the same reason, you can always group statements together on the same line if you can fit them. So what else can we use here? I don't know anything about any of my angles, but I do have this side that's shared by both triangles. So I can say AC is congruent to itself. Okay, and that's by the reflexive property of congruence. So now I can say that the two triangles are congruent. And actually, I'm just going to follow from this statement, right? They've matched up parts already, BCA and DCA. And I'm just going to use my triangle symbol. So triangle BCA is congruent to triangle DCA. And that's by SSS. And now I have one more step. I can now say the angles are congruent. And that's by CP CTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, so why don't you try number two? You've got PS parallel to QR. So I'm going to put my parallel markings on there. I've got angle PQS congruent to SRQ. So I'm going to mark that with congruency as well. So in some way, you're going to use these parallels right, to come up with another pair of angles. So go ahead and give this one a try. See what you can come up with. Your goal is to state that PQ is congruent to RS, which again means you first need to get the triangles congruent. So pause the video, give this a try, and then come back when you're done. Okay, let's see how you did. I'm going to cheat. I've already got it pre-written. Okay, so we state the given, separate it into two lines this time, so it fits a little nicer. So we can use alternate interior angles from the parallels. We can say that angle PQS is congruent to angle RSQ. We can also say QS is congruent to itself. Now, uh, let's see. I actually disagree with the order on here. I would say that QS is congruent to SQ. Whoops. Okay, the reason being, to get these in the same position, do you see how I would have to rotate one triangle? If I, let me outline this in blue. Okay, so if I want to get this triangle into the same position as that one, let me first group these together. Okay, so let's see if I can grab my blue triangle here, and I'm going to rotate it. Whoop. There it is. Do you see that? When I do that rotation, what was S spins around to Q, and what was Q spun around to S. Did I say that right? Let's take a look at that again. So here's the original position. I'm rotating it. So again, this was S has now rotated to Q, and what was Q rotated around to S. 
So the proper order should be QS congruent to SQ. And as you can see, they used it here in the statement for the triangles. So triangle PQS is congruent to triangle RSQ. And I'm saying they because I did not write this. Um, and that's by angle, angle, side. So again, let me put this back where it was. Take that away. And you can see you have two non-included angles where a side that is not included between the two angles. Okay, once we have the triangles are congruent, then we can say that PQ is congruent to RS by CPCTC. So hopefully you picked up on this and noticed that that statement was wrong. And I'll, I'll give you a hint, I should have looked at this better before I actually printed this and fixed it. But you know what, it's good to talk about an error as well. So there could be others. We'll see as we go here. So give number three a shot. Okay, you're starting with X is the midpoint. It's the midpoint of WY, which makes WX congruent to YX. And it's also the midpoint of VZ. So VX is congruent to ZX. So given that, see if you can then prove that angle X WY is congruent to XYZ. Pause the video, write out your proof, and then come back when you're done. Okay, let's see. Here we go. So we write out the statements using the definition of midpoint. We can use the vertical angles. Oops. There we go. We could use the vertical angles. And then we can say the triangles are congruent by side angle side. Once we have the triangles congruent, we can then say that any corresponding parts are congruent by CPCTC. Okay, example four. JM bisects angle KJL. So if it's bisecting that angle, that tells me that this angle, it's going to be tough to get that in there, tight space, but this angle is congruent to this angle. We're given that angle JMK is congruent to JML. So I'll put double markings on these. Oh, that didn't come out so nicely. Oh, okay. And we're asked to prove that side JK is congruent to side JL. Okay, so again, start off with your given. See if you can prove the triangles are congruent and then finish it with saying the parts are congruent. So go ahead and pause the video, come back when you're done. Okay, let's see how you did. So here, and notice the wording, right? We're told JM bisects the angle. So that's definition of a bisector. In the last example, we were told, oh, I'm sorry, that was two ago, whoops. Where did, it, did I skip something? I must have skipped over something. Um, and this one, we were told X was the midpoint, right? So we use definition of midpoint, not definition of a bisector. Okay, so go by the wording that's given to come up with your reason. Okay, and notice they did something a little fancy here. They separated the given, and that's fine. Um, remember the rule about the given is it must be stated prior to using it. So they stated the part about the segment bisecting the angle, and then they used that. They stated what that meant. Then they stated the other part of the given. Then we used the reflexive property to say that uh, segment JM is congruent to segment JM. Then the triangles are congruent by angle side angle. 
All right, we've got that side included between the two angles. And then once we say the triangle is congruent, we can say that these segments are congruent by CPCTC. Okay, we've got one more. So this time we have parallels. And we're told D is the midpoint of BF. So we know BD is congruent to FD. So go ahead and see if you can come up with the proof to show that ED is congruent to CD. Pause the video and come back when you're done. Okay, here we go. So we state the given using the parallels. From that, we can say that angle E is congruent to angle C. And again, this is okay because there's no question here about what I mean by angle E and angle C. So I can use a single letter, that's fine. Then from the fact that D is a midpoint, we know BD is congruent to FD, okay. Then we can say that angle BDC, so of course here we need three letters, is congruent to FDE. And this should be the vertical angles theorem. That's important to put in there because remember sometimes we, we're using a definition. This is a theorem. Okay, that says all vertical angles are congruent. Then we have enough to say that the triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. So now we have a non-included side, right? Two angles and a non-included side. Once we've said that, we can say ED is congruent to DC by CPCTC. So that's the whole idea behind uh, using CPCTC, okay, to prove parts are congruent. It's not that different from what you've been doing. You have to get to where the triangles are congruent. Once you've stated the triangles are congruent, then you can prove that any of those corresponding parts are also congruent. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. That concludes the lesson for 4-6. Um, so make sure you submit your notes and have a good day.